Hey folks, Elder Law Care attorney Patrick Kelleher coming to you from elderlawcare.com. Folks, today's question I'm going to answer is, if I have a mortgage, can I still put my property in a trust? More specifically, can I put my home into my trust if I still have a mortgage? Hey folks, Elder Law Care attorney Patrick Kelleher. You may know me as the author of how to slay the four-headed beast, the metaphorical four-headed monster of estate planning and elder law, probate court, the estate death tax, financial creditors and predators, and possibly that $15,000 per month private pay nursing home. Folks, pick up a copy of the book on Amazon, paperback, Kindle, and Audible as well. Folks, today's question, can I put my home into my trust if I still have a mortgage? That's a great question, and that's a common question we often get here at our Elder Law Care Center. Folks, it's always, first off, it's always much cleaner when you do not have a mortgage where you can transfer or deed your home into your trust or what I like to call your treasure chest, okay? However, that's not always the case, and a lot of our clients and folks that come to us say, hey, Patrick, we still have a mortgage. Can we still transfer the property into the trust? And the answer is, it depends. Typically the answer is yes, but it takes some further exploration, some answering of questions, exploring and investigating the facts of the mortgage, of the type of trust, and how you hold interest in the trust, either as a beneficiary or the right to occupy the property as well as you journey through life. So let's explore that. So typically the banks would say, well, if you have a mortgage and you're going to transfer the deed to someone other than yourself, then you're going to trigger what they call, what the bank calls the due on sale clause. Basically saying, hey, now your property, you're transferring the ownership of the property to somebody else. That triggers the clause in your mortgage document that you signed when you took out that mortgage and were approved for that mortgage. That's a contract you have with your lender, with your bank. And that due on sale clause typically says that if you transfer the ownership of the property without the bank's approval, then the bank can enforce that due on sale clause, meaning they can accelerate all your loan payments and say, hey, Bill and Mary, pay up. You owe the balance of the loan next month. So you never want to be in that position. You do not want to paint yourself into the corner there. So. The Garn St. Germain Act is a law of 1982. It was a law that went into place, signed off by uh, late former President Ronald Reagan. And the law is named after two politicians. You have Jake Garn. He was a Rhode Island senator, and he teamed up with a congressman named Ferdinand St. Germain. Hence the reason why we have the uh, Garn St. Germain Act. So that's how the name was coined because these two politicians worked together and they wrote this law into effect to protect essentially homeowners from lenders being overly aggressive. So that being said, in the two prongs to remember folks, if so long as you're going to be a beneficiary of your trust and you have a right to continue occupying the property, they're typically the two prongs that will allow you to transfer your property into your trust, to allow you more specifically to transfer and deed your home into your trust. And the trust has to be what they call an intervivos trust, which is a lifetime gift that you're making. You're transferring the property, usually Bill and Mary as individuals, to Bill and Mary as trustees of their revocable trust. That way, Bill and Mary are still beneficiaries. Bill and Mary still have a right to reside in the property as well. Then, if their lender says, no, no, you can't put the property in the trust, you can send a nice, friendly Garn St. Germain Act letter, or preferably have your elder law attorney send that letter on your behalf to your lender, just explaining and educating them on the Garn St. Germain Act rules. And then you should be fine. The other question is, can you transfer your deed or your home into an irrevocable Medicaid trust or what I call a Medicaid asset protection trust? And that all depends, folks. You have to be really careful to make sure your elder law attorney drafts strategically appropriate language to meet those two legal prongs. Number one, somehow making you some degree of beneficiary 
but also giving you some level to uh, degree to reside in the property, to occupy the property. And you do have to be careful with that right to occupy in certain states because Medicaid in certain states, like here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, they're not too fond of that right or that power. So you want to work with your elder law attorney to strategically create language in your estate plan to give you an opportunity to meet those two prongs. Hey folks, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please scroll down and leave a message, a comment, an inquiry, or tell us what you would like to learn from our Elder Law Care Center. Folks, thanks for being here. Elder Law Care Attorney Patrick Kelleher, and we'll see you next time at elderlawcare.com.